Hello, you're watching BBC World News. I'm Adnan Nawaz. Our top story this hour. The US president-elect speaks out in a wide-ranging interview. Hello, I'm Sally Bundock with the business stories. Sterling is sinking against the US dollar on reports. Theresa May is opting for a hard Brexit, which Trump was talking about in that interview with the Times newspaper. And we take you to Silicon Valley to find out what the world's biggest players in technology are doing to get themselves ready for a Trump presidency. Hello again. Just days before he takes over at the White House, Donald Trump has given details for his foreign policy goals in an interview he granted to one British and one German newspaper, The Times and Built. The president-elect has promised a quick trade deal with Britain. He's also criticised Angela Merkel's policy on refugees. Uh, more on those interviews given to those two newspapers with Sally. Thanks very much. Yes, in addition to the interview with The Times, the US president-elect spoke with the German newspaper Bill as well, as you were hearing there where he uh, threatened BMW, the German car giant, with a 35% border tax for cars manufactured in Mexico. Last week, the German car giant did say it was committed to its plans to opening up a new factory in San Luis Potosi, despite Mr Trump's persistent warnings about the impact that could have. Earlier this month, of course, we heard from Ford abandoning its proposals to invest $1.6 billion in new production plant in Mexico. Also, uh, Fiat Chrysler as well changing its mind on that. So it's very interesting upping the ante with regards to mentioning BMW specifically in that interview. Also, he spoke a lot about Brexit, as you've heard. Well, tomorrow, UK Prime Minister uh, Theresa May is expected to give a speech outlining the country's plans to leave the European Union. Well, reports suggest she'll be prioritising the control of migration over access to the single market, so-called hard Brexit. And this has called a massive fall in the value of the pound, as you can see here. So the pound versus the dollar, the pound versus the euro, versus the dollar overnight during Asian trading time. It's fallen a further 1% uh, versus uh, the dollar. So we're keeping a close eye on that as we assess uh, how that speech will go down this week. And if we stay with... Uh, President-elect Donald Trump, we're also assessing in World Business Report how the vast US technology industry is preparing for him as a president. It forms a huge part of the US economy, accounting for just over 7% of the value of goods and services produced in the US in 2016. So our technology correspondent, Rory Kathleen Jones, has been to San Francisco to find out what the tech sector does think about Mr Trump, his policies and what changes they're making in preparation. So I'll be back with all of that and all the other business stories. I'm on Twitter. I'll see you in about 25 minutes. Thank you very much indeed, Sally. Yes, you will. Uh, in fact, a business angle to this story that is breaking out of South Korea. Lee Jae Young, who is the head of the Samsung conglomerate, uh, some of our other main stories now. The Turkish parliament has given preliminary approval to a new constitution that will considerably enhance the powers of the president. The final articles were passed late on Sunday, with the governing AK party gaining the necessary majority. There will be a second round of voting later this week. Campaigners say the wealth gap between the richest and poorest people is much wider than previously acknowledged. The charity Oxfam says the top eight richest people on our planet have as much money as 3.6 billion of the world's poorest. It's called for action to address what it calls a warped economy ahead of this week's World Economic Forum in Switzerland. Northern Ireland's devolved government is set to collapse today after Sinn Féin again insisted it would not replace Martin McGuinness as Deputy First Minister. Under the power-sharing system, his resignation a week ago also removed the First Minister, the Democratic Unionist Arlene Foster. Elections will be called unless there's an unexpected breakthrough. Police in Brazil now say 26 people were killed in a prison in the city of Natal during shocking violence that broke out overnight during the weekend. The clashes between rival gangs was brought under control early on Sunday after police stormed the prison. Katrina Renton reports. New Zealand's new Prime Minister says he will continue to champion a major Asia-Pacific trade deal. Bill English has been speaking to my colleague Lucy Hawkins in one of his first major interviews since he took office. He said the trade deal was still alive, despite Donald Trump's vow to withdraw from the Trans-Pacific Partnership on his very first day in office. Bill English and Lucy Hawkins still to come here on BBC World News. Viola Davis.
Hello, you're watching BBC World News. These are our latest headlines. A cargo plane has crashed in Kyrgyzstan. The past few days have seen the outgoing Obama administration make apparent inroads to key bilateral cooperation with Cuba after it scrapped the controversial wet foot, dry foot policy. But President-elect Donald Trump has already appointed a well-known supporter of the U.S. economic embargo to his transition team. And there are plenty of people, especially in Miami, urging him to go in the opposite direction to the thaw that President Obama began with Cuba. So will Trump reverse Obama's Cuba legacy? Will Grant is in Havana for us. Eating dog meat is not uncommon in parts of East Asia. But Western campaigners trying to disrupt the trade in animals many people in the world consider to be household pets. They've been involved in mass rescues. One of these operations is currently happening in South Korea. 200 animals have started their journey from a dog farm to new homes in Britain and North America. Our correspondent in South Korea is Steve Evans. The Oscars take place at the end of next month, and one film tip to do well is Fences. It's directed by Denzel Washington. It's based on a Pulitzer Prize-winning play. Viola Davis has already won a Golden Globe for her performance in it. She's been speaking to our arts editor, Will Gompertz. Uh, finally, let's uh, show you... You're watching BBC World News. These are our main headlines. Time for World Business Report. Hello and welcome. You're the World Business Report. I'm Sally Bundock. Also in the programme, of course, we'll have more detail on that story Adnan just mentioned. The Korean authorities issuing an arrest warrant for the de facto boss of Samsung. We'll have more information on that for you. First, though, let's uh, talk about what the US president-elect Donald Trump has been saying. He'll uh, offer Britain what he calls a quick and fair trade deal within weeks of taking office. His comments come just days before a speech by the UK Prime Minister Theresa May, where she is expected to reveal further details of the country's strategy as it prepares to leave the European Union. Well, I'm joined by Dr. Brian Class, who's a fellow at Comparative Politics at the London School of Economics. Good morning. Good morning. There is so much to talk about. He had a lot to say, didn't he, in that interview? He Let's just does. start with the uh, tariffs on BMW to begin with. Um, what do you think BMW is thinking about that and is it likely to happen? It's quite interesting because we saw Ford and Fiat Chrysler say, look, we will invest more in our US factories. We will perhaps uh, put on the back burner our expansion in Mexico. BMW at the time said we are going to stick with our plans. It's interesting how uh, uh, sorry, businesses worldwide are having to react to this uh, president-elect, his tweets, his comments, his interview last night. Michael Gove being a part of the interview, the interviewing team, as it were, which is also quite interesting. Um, give us your take on that. He seems to say that it's all going to happen very quickly. Uh, Theresa May doing a speech on Brexit this week, which will have an impact, no doubt, already causing Sterling to fall in advance of that. But broadly, talking about China, uh, US trade deficit, he called it uh, sh uh, not fair, he called it not free trade, he wants fair trade. All right, Dr. Brian Class, thank you for your time thank today. You. And of course, lots more on that story on our website. Let's stay with the US and Donald Trump. We're assessing how the vast US technology industry is preparing for him. It forms a huge part of the US economy, accounting for just over 7% of the value of goods and services produced there in 2016. Our technology correspondent, Rory Kathleen Jones, has been to San Francisco to find out what the tech sector thinks of Mr Trump's policies. Now, shares of the Japanese airbag maker Takata are tumbling after they announced a deal with the US government. The company is paying a billion dollars and ple is pleading guilty to criminal wrongdoing over the airbags, which have been linked to multiple deaths. Let's go to Sharonjit Lale, who's in our Asia Business Hub. Nice to see you, Sharonjit. What's the detail? OK, thanks a lot, Sharonjit. Uh, and the other big story coming out of Asia today is the special prosecutor in South Korea seeking an arrest warrant for the head of Samsung Group for his role in a corruption and influence peddling scandal. Scandal. J.Y. Lee is accused of bribery in connection with the decision by the National Pension Service to support a merger of two Samsung affiliates. Uh, it's said that he paid bribes totaling 43 billion won in dollars. That's 36.42 million dollars to Choi Soon Sil, the friend of President Park Geun-hye at the centre of 
the escalating corruption scandal. Let's show you the pound sterling on the way down versus the dollar down 1.6% versus the dollar uh, since it was reported in the Sunday Times about what Theresa May will have to say in her speech this week about Brexit. It would seem a hard Brexit is what is expected uh, she'll be discussing this week. That's having a real impact on the value of the pound and we're seeing Asian shares falling across the board with a much weaker dollar versus uh, currencies like the Japanese yen. I'll see you soon. Northern Ireland's devolved government is set to collapse today after Sinn Féin insisted again they would not replace Martin McGuinness as the Deputy First Minister at Stormont. Our Ireland correspondent Chris Page reports. Six o'clock means breakfast, of course, with Charlie and Naga today. News, business and sport. They'll have more on why doctors say a system in place to review GP referrals can lead to dangerous delays in diagnosis or treatment and involve people who have never seen a patient. And no doubt there'll be more on that Times interview given by Donald Trump. That's breakfast at six. <coughs> You're watching BBC World News. These are our top stories. Donald Trump has outlined his foreign policy priorities in an interview with the British and a German newspaper. He talks about smart trade, not free trade. How Brexit could be a great thing and a possible nuclear arms deal with Russia. The special prosecutor in South Korea is seeking an arrest warrant for the head of the Samsung Group for his alleged role in a corruption and influence peddling scandal. Kyrgyzstan says at least 32 people, including six children, were killed when a cargo plane came down near Bishkek Airport. The cause of the crash is not known at the moment. Time now for our news review, and we have to begin, of course, with the Times newspaper. Uh, this interview given by Donald Trump also appearing in the German newspaper Bild. But, but times are changing. David Buick, market strategist with Pamela Gordon. Good morning Good to you. Good morning, morning to you, David. What about Bertrand Mills and Jerry Cottle? Uh, you one see, I, I lived on the other side of the world in the Philippines. Uh, you know, right. the there we are. The influence of uh, the Ringling Brothers. You know. OK, look, we'll come on to Brexit yep. in a moment. But let me first of all quote to you from Ivo Dalda, who is a former U.S. ambassador to NATO, from his Twitter account. He says Trump is more critical of NATO, the EU and Germany, all close allies than he's ever been of Putin and Russia. We're entering an upside down world. That's one way to look at Donald Trump. <coughs> I, that's a good thing. OK, that's we great. can actually move on we because you've covered on. everything very comprehensively. Brilliant. Now, uh, China Daily has on its front page the fact that uh, President Xi Jinping is in Davos for the World Economic Forum in Switzerland. I mean, many, many years ago, I mean, you say it started in the 70s. Yeah. Um, there were world leaders there regularly decades ago. I of mean, course it, has, there were. it hasn't been like that for some time. Does this give it a boost? The, it the does, it does give it a boost. <laughs> what about uh, fake news? Do you, you find it difficult to distinguish between fake news and real news? Do you know what I think the problem is out there? Now? False information may not be good news for them. Well, I was going to say, <clears throat> what about yeah. France? Uh, Business Standard, cheap, cheap smartphones, they're, they're looking to try and create. Uh, because that way... It won't be a cashless society in two no, or three no, no, years' no, time. No, We're no. talking about a cheap mobile phone. But I'm just talking, I'm just talking about yeah. a cheap sorry, yeah. mobile phone. Yes, yeah, yeah. so I remember reading about Denmark a couple of years ago saying it wants to become the first country which completely does away with every single bit of cash. And interestingly, waitresses and waitresses were not happy because they were thinking they'd get fewer tips, exactly. which is an interesting angle on it. There, there would be complications. <laughs> well, it's part of the service industry. Yes, so let's forget about wearing white gloves and uh, doing silver service for your uh, extremely wealthy boss and talk about... So the circus, when you were a kid compared to now, it's changed a lot, hasn't well, remember, it? Yeah. I just think that it was just part of it. It's like the pantomime. I loved it. But there oh, again, that's my generation. That will never, ever end. That will never, <laughs> ever end. <laughs> Barnum and Bailey, though. Sad finished. news. Sad, Bye -bye. sad news. <laughs> Thanks, David. Thanks so much. Have a really good day. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye.